You're not using power tools, are you? Day 10. Time, approximately 1.30 p.m. Location, Rust Manor, Big 52, SC Branch. Ahem. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Everypony. I'm Lonesome Pony, and this is a special edition of the news. Fresh from Dust Manor. For a moment, a feminine voice of the afternoon DJ could be heard in the background, yelling something like, Give me back my seat, you old hog! Followed by a metallic sound. DJ Good Stuff will be back right after the news. I mean, what kind of name is Good Stuff anyway? What are you, a mint hall stable? Ow! 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 Stop that! Alright, I was kind and sweet, but now you asked for it. Here comes love and tolerance, Minty. A muffled sound that resembled a brawl interrupted the program for a minute, before Lonesome Pony began to talk into the microphone again, while trying to hide his panting. Uh, good stuff. Wishes y'all well, and we'll be back in a minute. But at the moment, she has her hooves tied with a power cord. So, where were we? Alright, special news. This is fresh from not even an hour ago from my radio friends in Rust Manor. Thank you, Easy Filthy Butterfly 3023. Once Pony cleared his throat and started talking. <clears throat> some heroes fall, some heroes get killed, some heroes disappear into a stable and never come back. Well, our hero gets spanked. Yeah, you heard me. Late this morning, the ghost was sighted outside of Rust Manor, heading for the town. And when she tried to approach a group of caravans, a guard scolded her and spanked her in front of every pony. Now, are you fucking idiots or what? And little we know about this pony destroyed a fortified barn outside Red Trotter's territory and ran into a heavily guarded tunnel, frying all the robot guards inside. Yeah, I got some more info out of Tunnel Town. The local guard chief, Trigger Happy, was present and she says the foal destroyed six sentinels using only a stone as a weapon. And you pick a fight with this foal? Ha! <laughs> what was that? Are you trying to die? Tired of living? Anyway, it seems that the guard won the fight, if you can call it a fight. Little Miss Yellow tried a friendly approach, got a spank in response, and ran away crying. There was a long sigh, followed by a long pause. Yeah, this is what I call gratitude. LP closing. Have some decent music while good stuff unties herself. I've got to fly if I want to live. Stay classy, Big 52. Music filled the silence. Puppy hid behind an abandoned cart, still crying. What did she do this time? She tried really hard to behave and be a good pony, but everything seemed to backfire every time. From a simple peek in a tunnel, up to crazed parting robots and roofs falling, why did Mom keep moving and won't wait for her? The little filly felt empty and tired. But Puppy couldn't simply stop searching and sit down. Even if ponies were unkind and the road seemed endless, her mom was somewhere just over the next hill. Maybe the hill beyond that one. One hill after another, one at a time. It was just a matter of time. And the filly in yellow got up. Moping behind a cart wasn't going to find Mom. She was a filly on a mission. Everything else didn't matter. Go, puppy! Day 10. Time approximately 1.45 p.m. Location, Rust Manor, Big 52, SC Branch. The two stallions guarding the gates exchanged a rapid glance, seeming uncertain of whom should deal with the approaching filly. Finally, the older one addressed the filly. Say, kiddo, if you want to get inside, you have to pay. Two hundred caps and leave all your weapons here. Puppy frowned. Two hundred was a super-duper big number. She was quite good at counting up to four, and with some help, and time, even ten. But two hundred? What was a hundred, anyway? Ah, uh, I'm just looking for my mom. Puppy, please? Show me the bottle caps, kid, and we have a deal, Philly. The guard yawned, trying to maintain his neutral tone, but he was concerned about what would happen if the filly didn't have the cash and still insisted on going inside. Maybe a good idea to call the chief. Pouch! A large bag floated in front of Puppy Smiles and she handed it to the guard. Ah, uh, can you help me counting these? Ah, uh, there are enough shiny caps? 
The stallion nodded and emptied the bag on the table. It was two-thirds full of caps and a third in bits from the old age. Some of them were golden. All right, this is more than enough. The pony blinked to the other guard, who cocked his head and looked back at him with a snort of disapproval. Come on, she's just a fool, you can't be serious. The first guard sighed and counted out exactly 200 caps, putting the rest back in the bag and giving them to Puppy, who smiled and put away her possessions. Thank you super much, mister. Pretty guard ponies. Inside the walls, Rust Manor was cramped and crowded. The air wagon used to build the walls doubled as houses and stores, leaving little space to move around the large fortification in the middle of town. Now that Puppy had taken a better look at the whole place, it seemed like a village of tiny creatures built all along the trunk of a dead tree, only the tree was being a hundred meters tall. The little filly trotted around, peeking inside the shops and trying to find a door to get inside the fortified tower. The arrow was pointing exactly in the middle of the big thing, so it was pretty obvious that she needed to get inside of it somehow. There were a lot of ponies. Some of the locals looked at Puppy with interest and curiosity, but they were mostly minding their own business. Tagging a little filly with an innocuous oddity, especially after her duel with the mercenaries in that morning, Puppy didn't care at all. At last, she had found a place full of pretty ponies that behaved like real ponies, and she knew that where there were big ponies working, there must be... Yeah! Ponies playing! A trio of foals, a filly, and two colts were running around, laughing and yelling at each other. They were having so much fun. But Puppy had to go find her mom. If she went away and the pretty ponies went away, she couldn't play, and she wanted to play so much. But Mom... Maybe only a minute. Just to make friends and ask if they'd seen her mom? Yeah, right. She wasn't going to play. Uh, <clears throat> talk, not play, talk with the pretty ponies because she wanted to have fun. It was because they could know her mom was. Ah, clever puppy. She could even outsmart herself. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? The trio of foals stopped running and yelling, turning as a single pony towards the newcomer. The filly was a gray unicorn with a pink mane. The two colts were unicorns with a palette very similar to the filly's, and an earth pony with a brown mane and a green coat. They stared for a long moment at Puppy, both in amazement and a little concern. Then the filly asked, Where did you get that super creepy spacesuit? The filly in yellow frowned. It's not creepy. It's Cap Space Captain Dramata's spacesuit. At this point, Puppy made a theatrical pause to raise the tension, and added, It's cool! Unicorn Colt nodded. Yeah, I have Andromeda comic. She's a girl, but she's super cool all the same. Because she has a laser gun and fights zebra aliens. The other two foals no nodded, but the expert gave his approval. The Unicorn filly smiled in a friendly manner. I'm big deal. Pointing a hoof at herself then waving a hoof at the other unicorn as she continued. He's my twin brother, Ricochet, and he's Painkiller. And I'm Puppy Smiles. I came from Canterlot looking for my mom. What were you doing? Playing? Can I join? Great. Now that she asked that, she had to ask twice. She could take a pause, right? Ricochet tilted his head. Your mom? What's her name? She's called Rainy Days, and she's the coolest pony ever. She can cook muffins, cupcakes, and chocolate pudding, and apple pie, but she makes me eat alfalfa. She went away some days ago for work, and then our house in Cadillac collapsed, and I'm looking for her because Mr. Voice knows where she is, so it's better than waiting for her inside a collapsed house, I think. The three little ponies nodded, as if Puppy's speech made sense. Yeah, last time I broke a bottle, Mom was really mad. I don't want to know how mad your mom will be when she finds out you broke a whole house. The filly in yellow frowned. It's not my fault. I went to sleep, and when I woke up, the house was gone. Tell that to your mom. I tried to say that a band of slavers broke the bottle, but she knew. Moms have a sort of super sense that tells them who did what. Added Painkiller, muttering the last words as if it was better not to divulge too much of the secrets. But I didn't break my home. Cross my heart. Puppy insisted on defending her position mostly because it was the only defense she had. 
Nobody was around when the house collapsed, and she was almost sure that she didn't cause it. You better did not. Cut short, big deal. But, I don't know any rainy days living in Rust Manor. We were playing cow ponies and zebras. Want to join in? You can be the alien. Painkiller protested. I don't want to be the zebra anymore. Why can't you two be zebras for once? Ricochet tapped his sister's horn with a hoof. Because zebras don't have horns, duh. Puppy intervened in the discussion. Once I was told that zebras can grow wings with some sort of weird device. But they're bat wings. Besides, I want to be Space Captain Andromeda. But you don't have Andromeda's gun. You could be Maripony, the second mare on the moon. Tried Ricochet, but his sister interrupted. Maripony's never been on the moon for real. A pony can't get there. Yeah, she did. No, she didn't. Yeah, she did. No, she didn't. The twins stood in front of each other, muzzle against muzzle, arguing about a two centuries old moon landing. Painkiller approached Puppy, sighing. I'll go on like this till dinner. Uh, so, that's a cool suit. Does it have a compass and healing spells? Puppy watched the brother and sister show for a moment, then moved her attention to the other pony. He was a little older than her, and he already had a cutie mark of a syringe. Are uh, you, uh, gonna make injections to me? The colt stared for a bit, confused at the filly inside the rad suit, before realizing she was talking about his cutie mark. What? Oh, this? Don't worry. Dad doesn't let me touch his stuff. So, uh, you're quite cool. Or a filly. Compliments. They always worked on Puppy's ego. She grew ten centimeters taller and ten seconds flat, and sported a broad smile. Well, yeah, I'm cool. I know. Yeah, this spacesuit has everything. A compass, a lot of dots here and there, and some writing. See? The filly poked the helmet, trying to show the coal all the cool stuff, she said. And look at this. Ahem. <laughs> rock! The Rock of Destiny floated in front of Puppy. Wah! How'd you do that without unicorn magic? The full shrugged. I don't know. The suit does all this stuff for me. It's magic. I'm not going to explain that. The colt tapped his chin, thinking. Too bad you don't have Andromeda's laser gun. But I have an old toy gun I've never used before. But because it's so heavy that I can't hold it in my teeth. Maybe with that levitation thing it could fit in with your costume? Puppy's eyes grew large as two round soup bowls. Really? Yeah. Maybe if you have something to barter with it with, we could make a deal. I don't really want it anyway. It seems girly, and it does nothing. Day 10. Time approximately 3 p.m. Location Rust Manor, Big 52, SC Branch. While Painkiller was looking for the pile of 42 muffin boxes, not believing his luck, Puppy tried to point at something with her brand new laser gun. It was a pistol with a futuristic form, an antenna with, on the muzzle and some metallic rings here and there. The grip had no trigger and the whole object was silvery gray with red plastic inserts. It's heavy, complained the little filly, trying to hold it in a hoof to no avail. Hey, no refunds! The colt was constantly dropping one box of muffins after another in his grasp. Why can't I hold all these muffins? In the meantime, Puppy aimed at the sky, sitting on a rump and using both hooves to hold the weapon. She said one word. Bang! New equipment detected. Soul Inc. Prototype 152. Codename Sentenza. Synchronizing. Opening communication bridge with comm station number 2. Checking status. Ponymedes net online and operating at 12%. Relaying coordinates. Ah. The stupid suit's talking nonsense again. From the cloud curtains appeared a thin red line of light, then a second and a third. They were like faint laser beams, piercing the leaden skies and illuminating a tiny and seemingly innocuous red dots on roofs and here and there. A dog that was napping under the bench chased one of the dots across the street before banging his muzzle on a door. Warning. Pony Medes 4, 6, and 7 are not responding. 
Ponymedes 8 to 12 cannot lock on target. Warning power up sequence delayed by impossible to deliver an estimate. Painkiller didn't pay attention to Puppy, already trotting away and leaving a small trail of muffins behind him. Yeah, whatever. It's been a pleasure bartering with ya. Sometimes the combined effort of a community can save a town, but other times a hero has shown up and fights his battle. And there are even times when it's just a matter of blind luck. Warning. Signal lost. Abort command. Repeat. Abort command. Closing communication bridge. Pony Medes offline due to decalibration. Orbital relocation and maintenance. Downtime 24 hours. Finally, these suits stopped talking. Puppy snorted. Hey, you have to finish with all this blah blah blah, I don't care. We have to go find Mom. Day 10. Time approximately 3.30 p.m. Location, Rust Manor, Big 52 SC Branch. Oh yeah? And you're a stinky fish! Oh yeah? And you're so uncool that even your cuties flee from you! Big Deal and Ricochet were still standing muzzle to muzzle, arguing about something they probably didn't even remember. Oh, that should explain why you have so many cuties. You seem a walking flea circus. Hi, puppy. And you are a girly girl, all smoochy, and all you do is girly, and all your toys are girly, and... Hi, puppy. And you are a... Uh, a... Uh, a... Uh, a girl! Hi, Rico. Hi, Big D. I've waved a hoof, trotting past the twins. At last finding the entrance to the tower. A sign on top letting y'all know that it was really a classy brothel, as if the filly cared. The place was filled with red drapes and scarcely illuminated, to hide the worn furniture. In front of the entrance, a mare was sitting behind a corner, usually greeting customers, but now staring surprised at the little pony in front of her. From Puppy's point of view, this was a nice place, with a lot of fancy things like posters and marble statues of ponies. Ah, oh, hi there. I don't think this place is good for you. Puppy smiled and waved a hoof. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Mr. Voice says my mom's in this place. The mayor looked slightly concerned. Ah, can't say this is impossible, actually. I have a couple of new girls working here. Do you know your mother's name? No, little one, don't touch the statue, it's fragile. Ah, don't look at that either. The filly was already exploring, having found an interesting statue of a stallion in a very, uh, <clears throat> manly pose. The filly frowned. I think this pony has too many legs. Ah, she's called Rainy Days, and she is... I'm sorry, little one. There ain't no rainy days working here. But if you want to be sure, don't touch it! I can call the new earth pony working here, just in case. Hey, Holly, come on down! Very classy brothel. Puppy wasn't listening to the mare anymore, her eyes staring at some faded crayon lines on the wall, half hidden behind the statue. And now she was staring at the same wall, only two centuries earlier. Wait here, puppy. Mom will be back soon. It'll just take two minutes. Okay, Mom. Love you. Bye-bye. Mom nuzzled puppy behind the ear, making her giggle before trotting away. The big room was so gray and sad, with just a couple of seats and a low table filled with an ultra-boring magazines just showing weapons and stupid soldiers on them. Puppy sat in front of the wall, looking at the gloomy, empty space in front of her. This needed changes. This needed crayons. It took a lifetime, at least ten minutes, but now Puppy's masterpiece was almost finished. There were two of the prettiest ponies she's ever been able to create. One was little and pink, with a bright yellow mane. Puppy was particularly proud of how she captured her own pinkiness. The second was bigger, with a purple coat and an orange mane. Mom, she was beautiful. If only Puppy could write how beautiful she was. Oh well, the drawing was already doing a great job anyway. The pole had already added some trees to the scene, both green and yellow, and one was pink, with a yellow trunk, because she always thought that pink would be the best color for a tree. She looked over at her work to see something was missing. Sun, check. Butterflies, check. Muffins, check. Now the picture needed only one last thing. And when we're done, we'll go see Dad's place, and he'll be back, so we'll be happy forever. She knew what was missing but she couldn't finish the work all the same. What are Dad's colors? 
Puppy, what the hell are you doing? You can't draw on walls. What did I tell you? Mom, I can't remember Dad's colors. Mom fell silent immediately. Puppy was still looking at the drawing, trying not to lose her inspiration. But how could she draw a pony if she didn't know what colors they were? Suddenly, Mom hugged her so tightly that she gasped. Don't worry, puppy. I swear this will end one day, and we will be happy together. As before the war, I... I... Hey, little one, wake up. Pay attention. Is this your mother? Puppy turned her head towards the proprietor of the brothel, now accompanied by a young mare that she didn't know. The young prostitute looked at the filly in confusion and cocked her head. No, she's not mine. I remember having a foal. Besides, I've not had any pink in my family. I... I've been here. It was... Puppy tried to remember, but it wasn't easy. It was as if the memories she wanted to reach were further away than she thought. A month ago, I think. But it was different. The matron snickered, patting the filly on the back. I don't think so, little one. I've been the proprietress in the Velvet Pearl for fifteen years, and I've never charged a single doorknob. The filly went back again, looking at the little drawing, and finally noticing something different, something new. A broad smile appeared on her face. I remember him. He was white and yellow. And was white and yellow. The fool pointed a hoof at the picture, turning towards the two mares. That's my dad. See? He's my dad. I do remember his color, but there he is now with me and Mom. There's something written here. Please read it. <clears throat> please, please, please. And the old mare lowered her head, looking at the drawing for the first time in her life. Now that she'd never seen it, she just couldn't give a buck about a stand on the wall, choosing to cover the mess instead of repainting it. The drawing was of three ponies. Two were clearly the work of a foal, just some colored lines on a wall with some trees and a green line to represent the ground, but the third one seemed to work of some point good at drawing. It showed a white stallion with a golden mane, very similar to the mane the filly who started looking at the wall. Under the drawing, somebody had written a few words, and the old mare read in a low voice, almost whispering, Together again, here and forever. Love, Mom. Hobie put a hoof on the painting. Mom was here! And now we're all here. This is me, this is Mom, and this is Dad. Wait, I know. The filly reached for a pencil and added one last detail on the work. Three smiles on the ponies' faces. Now we're all happy. Yay. We can have a picnic and chase butterflies and wait for fireflies and Mom and Dad will kiss me goodnight. It'll all be all right again. Puppy paused, staring at the image as if she was living through the story she told. The younger mare stared at the scene in silence, her face betraying a growing angst. That... that foal. How could she endure all this? The child's drawing on the wall was all that was left of her family. She was still smiling as if it was real. She was smiling. But... but they were all dead. She had already lost everything. She was alone. A little ghost drifting forever from place to place. Asking for something she could never have back. Without rest, nor hope, only a hole filled with faint memories, forever. The prostitute was overwhelmed with that sense of despair and eternal nothingness. She needed fresh air, to be out of that place, away from the haunting vision. She broke into a gallop, leaving the brothel behind as tears rolled down her cheeks. The older mare was made of sterner stuff. She had already seen much of what the wasteland could throw at her, and endured loss many times in her life. Yes, little ghost. You all are together. This was unfair. A lost foal finding a spot of happiness behind a statue of an aroused stallion was a cruel way for the wasteland to serve some relief. Nevertheless, there were moments like these that healed wounds and gave you the will to go on. Letting them slip away was worse than denying yourself. You can sit here and watch the painting as long as you want, but I don't think your mom is here. She must have a... Moved away a long time ago. I'm sorry, kid. The mayor raised her voice. And some pony came down and moved that statue. There are fools here. We're not perverts. The sensation was weird, but refreshing. That little foal, that clueless, lonely soul, made her wish to be a better pony somehow. Day 10. 
Time, approximately 4.45 p.m. Location, Rust Manor, Big 52, SC Branch. Prepare your muzzle. I'm giving you a black eye. Ah, uh, yeah? You in what army? I don't need an army. I already have a dumb brother. Hi, puppy. I'm not dumb. Hi, puppy. You're dumb. Dumber than your rump. Hi, Rico. Hi, Big D. Puppy trot past the twins, who were still standing muzzle to muzzle. The filly in yellow had no time to assist the fight. She was looking for the place the arrow was pointing at. Ah. Mr. Voice? What do we do now? Actual priority is investigate Rust Manor. A set of public places have been selected in order to ask as many questions as possible. The first location is on the list. Redwater Saloon. Puppy trotted inside the saloon. It consisted of a large hall with a loft at the bottom. Noisy and full of hardened ponies that swore and drank hard stuff like wild pegasus and coyote tequila. Sometimes mixed together and reinforced with special ingredients. To Puppy, this place was just simply another room full of pretty ponies, and that could know where her mom was. So she went into her usual routine. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? For a single moment, all eyes in the place turned the entrance. The bar pony crashed behind the counter, and the pianist stopped playing. The only sound in the whole place was from the one of the swinging doors creaking behind Puppy. One of the really tough ponies that was settling at one of the tables next to the entrance tipped his hat and murmured in a voice that was like the still silence that was perfectly audible to every pony. This ain't the place for ya, little pony. Now go play with the fold before you get spanked. Again. All the saloon exploded in laughter, every single pony. And since every pony was laughing, puppy laughed too. <laughs> very funny. Uh, I don't get... Get it, but it's funny. So, have you seen my mom? Most of the ponies didn't hear Puppy, but two of them did. A ghoul that was standing next to the door, and the pony who had spoken to her. The former simply got out of the place, while the latter sighed and face hoofed. No, don't know where your mom is. Now please go away. Trotting outside the saloon, Puppy smiled. Okay, her mommy wasn't there. But all the ponies in that place seemed crazy, so it was a good thing she wasn't there. Okay, Mr. Voice, what's next? Hey, you there, with the yellow suit? Wait a moment. The voice from the other side of the street made Puppy stop and turn on her tail. It was a ghoul pony wearing a leather hat and a long black trench coat looking at her. Yes, you. I have to speak with you. Puppy sat down in the middle of the street, tilting her head. Ah, okie dokie. Crossing the street, the ghoul patted the filly on the helmet. Now that he was near enough, Puppy noticed that he seemed sort of like a mummy, devoured by the sand and dried out like a big leather pelt wrapped around a carcass. Saying that he was ugly was an understatement, but Puppy had already dealt with ghouls and she knew that they could be nice ponies. Maybe not pretty, but nice. For a moment, she wondered if Soft Air and the others had already found a new home. Maybe they'd write her a letter, or even better, send her a postcard with some super cool photos. Puppy loved photos. The mummified ghoul cleared his voice before talking. As with every ghoul that she had met, he seemed to speak through a cut throat filled with jelly. His voice was quite old. Good girl. You are the lonesome fool. Lonesome Pony is making a big fuss about, aren't ya? What? Puppy giggled. <laughs> Ugly Pony says fancy words. The goal rose, a decomposing, perplexed half-eyebrow. Ah, uh, you can call me Molten Gold. I'm an adventurer and a treasure hunter. The fool smiled back. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? A faint smile appeared on the ghoul's muzzle. Maybe. What would you do for me if I did? Hubby jumped on all of her hooves. Anything. Please, please, please tell me where she's at. The smile on Gould's face broadened. Good, Philly. I think we can make a deal. Here. Day 10. Time approximately 11 p.m. 
Location, Solaris Stable, Big 52 SC Branch. The cave was dark and filled with bones of all genes, but mostly pony bones. It seemed like a, a weird carpet laid on the floor with a hellish atrium. Ruby Smile stepped into the shadow, followed by Molten Gold. I don't like this place. It's dark and full of hurt ponies. Why do I have to go in there? The ghoul sighed. The walk with a foal from Rust Manor to the Solaris stable had been torture. This foal couldn't shut up for a single moment. But if what Lonesome Pony said was real, then she had some sort of unstoppable raiding machine, able to deal with heavy defenses with little effort. Because I'm a treasure hunter and we're doing a treasure hunt. You said you liked a treasure hunt, didn't you? Puppy frowned. Ah, uh, yes. I like to play treasure hunt, but usually mom hides the cookies inside the jar, on the table. Where's the kitchen in the scary cave? This time we're not after cookies, puppy. Inside this place there's a thing I need, and if you find it, I'll tell you about your mom. Now, listen carefully. Puppy sat down, taking on a martial pose. Yeah! Space Pony Puppy Smiles ready for a mission. The ghoul snickered. That's the spirit, Philly. This is a secret base built by those good-for-nothings from Solaris, Inc. It was meant to work more or less like a stable, but buck me if they did everything they could and it did not work out as intended. Anyhow, that's not our problem. Our problem is a fact that is more defended than a ranger's base. But from what I heard, this could be a piece of cake for a badass like you. Puppy mumbled, trying to get a sense in the gold's words. Eh, uh, like a pie? Molten laughed. You remind me of a very young Soren. Anyhow, I'm not sure how big this place is, but there must be a place named Research Area. Okay, you have to reach that place. Okie dokie. Research Area. Got it. Search it twice. Puppy nodded enthusiastically. Exactly, and when you... No, 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 no. Not search twice. Research, as in science. Now, you just have to ask your suit. It's really easy. Now repeat after me. Research area. Research area. Tried the filly, a little dubious. Good girl. Now, when you're there... You have to find a box filled with these. The pony took a round orb from his bag and showed it to Puppy. It's called a memory orb, okay? Repeat it with me. Memory orb. Memorying orb? Molten's face deflated. How in Equestria have you survived this far? Memory, like remember things. I know what memory is, but that's a glass ball. It can't remember things, duh. The ghoul rose a hoof to his eye that was twitching. Wait, wait a second here, please. I'll be back immediately. Molten Gold headed outside, and even from where Puppy was sitting, she could faintly hear him screaming. Why, a retarded fucking fool? Why? Since the screaming seemed to go on for a while, Puppy decided to take a look around by herself, just to get acquainted with the place. The cave was large enough for a cart to pass, but the entrance was half collapsed so only slim ponies could actually squeeze in. It had been easy for Puppy and Molten, but an average stallion would have tried to get inside. He was going to be stuck in the middle of a bunch of half collapsed and unstable rocks at the bottom of a narrow canyon, exactly in the middle of nowhere. The bones that littered the ground were old, white and bleached by time and dry climate, some of them still sporting some pieces of clothing like laboratory coats or some bits of scorched armored saddles. Rummaging in the pile of bones, Puppy found a cool pair of glasses and some shiny bits. Lucky Puppy. There were even some weapons, but she already had her super cool space pistol and didn't need some noisy and ugly toys like those. Instead, she took the blue plastic card from the neck of a stallion. Blue wasn't her favorite color, but it had that cool image of a white olicorn stallion, 
and she liked cool things. When the ghoul came back, he seemed to be a lot happier. All right, I'm done. Where were we? Uh, the glass balls? Puppy tried uncertainly. Yes, right. The mem- <clears throat> Glass balls. Those. Fulton smiled and focused on what the filly was holding in her hoof. Say, where did you get a security pass? His eye once again started to dance, the pony pokey. No, 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 don't tell me, I don't want to know. Let's see if you understand. First, you have to go to the research area. Yes, and you look for the glass balls. Perfect. Now, go and don't come back until you have those damned orbs, the ghoul said, sighing with relief. Okay, I like you, Mr. Ugly Gold. When I find Mom, I'll tell her that you were nice to me. The filly trotted away, heading for the bunker's entrance. It's molten, not ugly. Ugh, who cares? Just do this job so I can never forget this story. Day 10. Time approximately 11.45 p.m. Location, Solaris Stable, Big 32, SC Branch. The entrance of the bunker was open, a gigantic round door two meters thick and six meters wide, with the usual symbol of the company in the middle of it on both sides. Even here there were skeletons on the ground, littering both the floor and the cave in the entrance hall of the stable. The hall was illuminated by flashing red and blue lights from four lamps on the ceiling. A clear sign of danger. Ah, uh, pretty lights. Puppy jumped over the reinforced door and trod around the hall for a moment. There were skeletons here, and destroyed sentinels. The whole place was peppered with bullet holes. Other guns and other ragged dresses, bones. Boring. Say, Mr. Voice, where's that research place? Are we there yet? Negative. Current location. Solaris Hable. Entrance hall. Downloading local maps. Warning, all blueprints for Solaris Stable are protected. No maps available. Direct navigation required. Auto mapping function activated. Uh, this means that you have no idea where we're going? Affirmative. Current location is partially unknown. Location impossible to set navigation point to objective. Please proceed with caution. Puppy's eyes widened in surprise and glee. There is something you don't know. Yay! Who's the smart pony now, who? Huh? 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 Who is it? Not you, Mr. Voice! Bleh! Warning. This program is not designed to feel bad. Any form of teasing will be reported to the legal department as infringement of the license agreement per Section 2, Article 9, 12. Puppy frowned. Hey, stop using smart words I don't know. I'm not stupid. I'm smart. Pretty pony, and when I get big, I'm gonna be intelligent as Pinkie Pie. Now, let's find this place. Since you don't know where it is, I have to do all the work as usual. From the entrance hall, there was only one passage inside the underground complex. Maybe this whole find the glass balls thing wasn't so hard as it seemed. After all, the place was still illuminated with the flashing blue and red lights, so it wasn't very scary. The walls were painted in a light shade of blue with a gray line on the floor, and the floor had... Sweet white and black tiles. So Puppy started playing with them. Jumping only on the white ones and avoiding the black tiles, because they were super scary bottomless pits. Hey, it was even fun. Yay! I'm Indiana Pones! Look at me, now I'll... Stop right there, criminal scum! Puppy sighed. She never lifted her eyes from the floor. It was too good to last. She had to know that. Please... Puppy, please, do not start being bully bots. I don't have time for this. I have to find the balls and then find my mom. The fool tried her best pretty face, looking at the sentry bot with the two most scornful eyes she could ever give. Surrender now or be annihilated. The two miniguns on the sentry pointed at Puppy. When suddenly the visor of the robot turned from red to blue, its voice changed. You again? What are you doing here? Puppy was already um, asking for the Rock of Destiny. 
But at that turn of events, the filly tilted her head, a bit uncertain. Mr. Blue? Is that you? Footnote. Level up. 10. New perk added. Finesse. No puppy, not there, please. Plus 5% critical chance.